Welcome to our consultants panel session. Today we're discussing a subject that frankly we could take an entire day to cover. It's the future of commercial food service. What do you believe are the most significant factors impacting how commercial kitchens are designed and operated in 2019? Uh, I would say mainly space allocation. Um, I think that one of the things we're starting to see is tariffs and such is going to impact things this year and maybe even next year more. And then finding ways to do more with less space, uh, not only small sizes, but what can you do with it? So there's more and more outlets for food service and there's more new sort of weird combined outlets like restaurants and other things that are happening that really are bringing food service to the forefront. Space is always, uh, always going to be a challenge. Uh, as well as budget, and sometimes those kind of go hand in hand. Uh, and I think most importantly is, uh, is designing environments to help retain staff, because I think retaining staff is, is important uh, and also can be very expensive with big turnover. Do you think, Ken, that the, the industry is generally keeping up with those impacts? Is it ahead of the curve? Is it falling behind? How is it coping? Um, I'm seeing with our clients that we're kind of ahead of the curve. Uh, there are challenges though, right? Not, not every project is a, is a clean sheet of paper, new construction. So sometimes we're going into existing buildings, old buildings uh, that have a lot of nuances and restrictions to them and we just have to figure out how to overcome those. Right. Is there a sense that any particular sectors are falling behind at all or are not dealing particularly well with those challenges? Some doing it better than others? I think some are definitely doing it better than others. Um, I think the, the university uh, system seems to keep up on trends mainly because the students demand it. There's uh, some that I think are falling behind a little bit. A lot of the rural healthcare, like hospitals and such, don't either have the money or don't have the, the um, knowledge to what they need to do to expand their food service operation. The grocery stores and supermarkets, I think you're going to see a, a change there too, but I think they've fallen a little bit behind and where they fall into place in the in the food service world right now. It, I think it is our responsibility also to keep up with the trends as well, not just the restaurateurs and the operators. Like we, we need to know that so that as we're designing and building space and space planning, we're, we're prepared for that. There are opportunities uh, to design in efficiencies that actually start to minimize or limit the amount of labor or hires that are required to, to specifically operate. Again, as, as those pools, the talent pools seem to become less and less, I think we have to rely on design efficiencies yeah. to help overcome that. And Joe, specifically with things like uh, Cook Chill or Cook Freeze, how, how has that changed the game for operators when you have machines that are, as Ken said, are able to do far more? What Cook Chill really does is it prevents, or it allows operators to make their own things that they would typically have otherwise bought. Right? So they can prepare ahead of time. And I think that those systems are really, I, I think they're underutilized overall in food service. Um, and you know, making things like sauces ahead, making things like stocks in house. Um, and I do think we are seeing a trend where more transparency matters and um, w knowing where everything comes from. And chef driven programs, they need those things. Why has been a member of FCSI important, but also why trade shows like NAFM important? Uh, for a lot of reasons, right? Um, uh, first, I think, is access. It's our network uh, for the manufacturing uh, companies, and it's our access to the manufacturing companies. But it's also our relationship together with each other. The, you know, the dinners, the cocktails, where you sit and talk about and exchange ideas is really invaluable. It's, it, right, to, in my mind, it's probably some of the best investment of time any consultant could make. Everybody thought that we were getting away from the personal contact, but what I'm finding is the millennials and, and everybody younger, they're actually, because of that, went away for a while. They, they want it even more now. So we're seeing a better response of them attending events. And when they actually do attend events and get to know each other, because even though these two right here will compete against each other from time to time, they're not afraid to exchange ideas or, or Joe to go to Ken and go, hey, I've got this issue I've never encountered before. Well, how, you know, what, have you ever done something like this? And then they help each other. That's what FCSI and that's what associations are about. Do you feel generally positive about the future of the industry and where it's going? The industry is incredibly busy right now. And I think with that, uh, it provides the opportunity for companies, whether you're a manufacturer or even a consulting firm, 
to uh, have the means to be able to reinvest within your own companies. I mean, there's 50,000 food startups that have come into the marketplace in the last 10 years. And they're displacing big, big, big companies like Campbell's and, and Kellogg's and General Mills, right? That's a, about to start happening in the equipment side too. It is a seismic change. The, the largest generation in the history of the world is now starting to reach its peak. They like to dine out. They like that social atmosphere of dining. Now it's a different experience of dining out than they, than we were used to or I was used to growing up. For the next 5, 10, 15 years, I don't see it slowing down at all. If anything, it's going to keep exploding.